Hey, what's going on, guys? Y'all miss me? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about last week. I had so much going on, and it had nothing to do with the election, but there was no way I was going to be able to record a video. I wasn't even in a place where I had the means to do it. But I'm back. I'm all fired up for this week, and I got 10 waiver ads to give you that uh, might make the difference for all of those who are on the cusp of getting into that playoff run for the fantasy season. But before I go forward, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, and this I never do because this is about football, but I have to say something. Anybody who knows me good also knows that I'm a huge music aficionado. And I'm just taking this moment to plug something that I'm really loving right now because they're my favorite group of all time. And I gotta do this for anyone who's listening or anybody who even cares about true hip hop. Some of y'all may have saw A Tribe Called Quest this weekend on Saturday Night Live. Some of you might be aware that they had an album that came out the day before that Saturday Night Live appearance Friday. It's an incredible, incredible album. Easily the best album of the year. If you know Tribe Called Quest, you should already own it. If you've never heard of them, take a listen to this album. It is incredible. The name of the album is We Got It From Here. Thank you for your service. So, again, that's just a seg that's just a, a, a variation or a veer off from what I usually do, but I'm just so excited about my favorite group coming back after 18 years without an album, and I just wanted to plug that. Y'all listen to that. Okay, we're going to get right into it now. Um, the first waiver ad of the week is Robert Kelly. Healthy scratch for Jones says it all. He ripped off nearly 100 yards, and I don't necessarily think he's a better player than Jones, but Shanahan is known for coaching what he deems good habits over talent. So it's like, in my opinion, Robert Kelly has this job the rest of the season. This is somebody that needs to be owned in 100% of leagues at this point. Nobody has a fully healthy running back core. If you're at this point where you're about to get into the playoffs or at that bubble where you could get in, you need another running back. So if he's available in your league, he shouldn't be after this week. Number two, Rashard Matthews, same thing. He shouldn't be available after this week. Marcus Mariota is playing at an insanely good level. And if y'all are paying attention, y'all are seeing the emergence of the two rookies from last year, him along with Jameis. But Mariota in particular is going nuts. And I thought at the beginning of the season it was going to be Tajay Sharp that was going to be the beneficiary of anything that Mariota was doing well, but it's looking like Rashard Matthews is coming along, and he's proven that Miami is one of those dungeons where receivers go to die because they never, for the most part, receivers in Miami do not fare too well. But he's showing that he's got the talent and he's being used heavily, getting nearly as much work as Delaney Walker lately. And he's averaging a touchdown a game over the past six. You can't argue that. The talent is there and it's all opportunity now. And it's looking like there's some trust going with Mariota and Rashard Matthews. So that's uh, a grab that you want to get. That would be the second wave of claim I would do. Number three, CJ Procise. I've mentioned him in the last couple of columns, if not if not the one the week before. But over the past three weeks, his role has increased and increased and increased at a staggering rate. Christine Michael or Christian, however you say his name, in a downward spiral right now. And we not knowing what Thomas Rawls is going to be when he comes back. What kind of it's just so questionable how he's going to be. Procise is slowly becoming the one sure thing that they have. And even with Russell Wilson, he seems to be much better now, but he still ain't 100%. He's the one sure thing they have. And I expect his role to continue to grow. And at the point of the uh, fantasy playoffs, he's probably going to skyrocket. So this is a guy that no longer needs to be on any waivers. Number four, Cameron Meredith. The next four weeks is going to be very telling 
about Meredith. It's going to tell all of us, and it's even going to tell him who he is. He's got the wide open lane to take full advantage of. Alshon Jeffrey's gone for four games with the uh, PED thing. He's got the chance to assert himself as the clear number one. He had two hit games, and all of a sudden it just seemed like he fell off the radar. Maybe he isn't as good as we want him to be. Maybe he is. Now's the chance to show it. To me, what it all comes down to is does he, does he or will he have the connection with uh, Cutler that he had with Hoyer. If he's able to establish some form of the same connection, he should be good to go. So I th I'm i hoping for the best, and this is somebody you definitely want to own because a number one receiver has value in this league, and I'm assuming at this point he'll be the number one going forward. Sort of the same situation with number five, and that's James Starks. He's not very good. He's never been very good. But how long did we really expect this running back wide receiver gadget crap that's been going on with Ty Montgomery and Randall Cobb to hold weight? It can't. They are not ground and power running backs, and that's what they need to be sustainable in this league. You can't continue to play that, 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 uh, that, that game where you don't even have a power back. You are not Dexter. This is a Dexter McCluster's type stuff. And you see that he can't hold down a uh, full-time running back position. So, with that said, they need James Starks, like it or not. And this is his chance, just like Cameron Meredith, where the lane is wide open for you to assert yourself. Get in there. If he gets in there and takes it, this can be somebody who could be a difference maker on your team and on the Green Bay team. So, And they're at that point where they're trying to turn things around from what, how things were going early in the season. So this is a perfect time to get on a player like this because he has all the possibility to shine. We'll just see if he's going to. So if, if C.J. Procise isn't available, that should be your first running back grab. The next is Deion Lewis. Look, I have no idea how ready he is to play, and I don't know how much he'll be used. And a part of it is because they've got a beyond serviceable player right now in James White filling in that role that he had quite admirably. But if you remember last year, you know that Lewis was beyond a serviceable player, like I said, um, James White is. He was a lights out difference maker. So, he, but he, is, he sustained a, a nasty injury that required two surgeries. We don't know how he's going to come back from that. We have no clue. That's a red flag in and of itself. But again, the way the Pats use things and try to trick you, trip you and trick you, trick you up, this is the type of guy that you want to have, and he's definitely worth a look, even if you don't add right off. Because... He'll be a player that they sprinkle in the next couple of weeks, and he'll be somebody they use heavily during the fantasy playoffs. It's a possibility. So that's somebody you want to keep an eye on. Same with the next guy, Thomas Rawls. Isn't it the worst thing in the world when you waste high draft picks? Ask all Peterson owners, all Jamal Charles owners, all Jeremy Langford owners because he went in the top half of the draft and Thomas Rawls owners got nothing from any of these guys and you drafted them heavily early and it's nothing is more incensing than that. He was primed for a good year. C. Mike was supposed to be an afterthought and ProSize was supposed to be even less. But this injury is a part of the injury is a part of football and it's where luck kicks into the whole situation, whether it be real football or fantasy. But it looks like he's coming back, and I don't know how he is physically. I don't know how he is mentally. Those types of injuries drain you in both places. Either way, if he's a part as good as he was supposed to be, and with the fact that uh, Christian Michael isn't going to be as – I don't know what's going to happen with him. I don't know how hurt he is. I don't know what his role is going to be. He definitely has the chance – to do what they wanted him to do early in the season. So 
He's certainly somebody to grab as, again, running backs are completely scarce at this point. The next one is Tyreek Hill. This is simply a function of Macklin being out and not knowing when he'll play next. I don't know. I don't know if I haven't looked at any news today, Roto World or nothing. So I don't know if he's been clear to practice or anything, but this is truly a function of Macklin. Uh, He's a wild card, wild, excuse me, wild card spot start. And um, with 13 targets last week and 10 catches, you can't ignore that. And he's loaded with talent. So this is one of those offenses. They got to use something. And if he can run through the slot or be a top, heavy over the top threat, it's a role that he can definitely do or be if Macklin is out. That's somebody to keep an eye on for sure. Number nine, Cameron Brake. I said this weeks ago with the early release of Safarian Jenkins and then the loss of Vincent Jackson, I said this is somebody that needs to be kept an eye on. And over the past few weeks, he's proven it. With Winston excelling the way he is, so is Cameron Brake. Three straight, three straight games with a touchdown. And the main thing about it is Mike Evans can't do it all by himself. They're losing running back after running back after running back after running back. They have nothing in their backfield. Tight ends tend to garner more usage when situations like that emerge, and it's starting to show. If you need a tight end, which you probably do, I know I do, Cameron Brake is somebody you definitely want to target. He's better owned than a lot of these guys out there. If you want, you can do the, you can hit me up with questions about, would you rather have Cameron Braid over this guy if you want, hit me up on Twitter. And the last, number 10, is a kind of a surprise because I barely do this, but Miami defense. This is a straight strategy ad. I tell you guys, if you listen to me for the, for the three years that I've been doing this now, I stream defenses from week one to the end of the season. I draft a serviceable defense in the draft. I don't care. That's why the defense is my last two, just like a kicker. I don't worry about trying to get distant because they never prove to be worthy of that mid-round grab that you use. And this is a perfect example. Over the past two weeks, the Miami defense has scored 13 or more points, and they got two straight weeks coming up, one against the Rams and one against San Francisco. This is cake. This is a non this is a non-decision. If you got a middling defense or somebody you should be cutting, you should be grabbing Miami defense immediately. This should be probably the second best grab of the week because I really expect them to do well the next couple of weeks. They got a couple of games that's going to be iffy during the playoff season and I don't, and I don't play on the fantasy playoff season and I don't expect you to necessarily hold on to them after the next two weeks. That's what streaming means. Using them when they're worth something and cutting them immediately. This is a defense that is going to be a huge that I expect, rather, to be a huge sleeper this week. In daily fantasy, for those that pay, they're a cheap defense, and they're going to be the chalk this week. No question about it. They're going to be probably the highly, the one of the heaviest owned defenses on the week without question. But, again, this is why I live to stream defenses for reasons like this. And if you follow that, you'll be just fine, I think. Either way, um, it's good to be back, guys, and thanks for listening. Same formula as always. If you got questions, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll answer them as soon as possible. You can leave questions down in the comments. I don't check that as often or don't have the means, really. Well, I do have the means. It's just kind of not as user-friendly to check that as, as it is on Twitter because, YouTube is on the iPhone is kind of weird when it comes to commenting, but Twitter is right there and user friendly. So hit me up there, create a page to follow. Hey, I can use the follows. So either way, good to be back. And I hope y'all have a good week 11. Y'all have a good one.